What is it called? Auto? Okay. Um, basically, he works with a neural network. So we have a camera right here, and then that there is Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi runs a very, very small neural network um, and, and steers it. It uh, goes very, very slowly, but he does work. We had him at Pittsburgh, and um, he was actually the only functioning autonomous car there, which is not saying much because there were only like two other autonomous cars. Um, but totally went around the track. We were super proud. Um, so, I mean, should I talk about like how it works? Or okay. Um, so this up here in front is uh, is how it steers. There's a um, there's a servo mechanism in there, and the the drill is what actually um, like turns the whole the whole steering mechanism. Um, which is a potentiometer here. Um, this is actually, I mean, it, it looks kind of hacked together, but it's really cool and it's like a really awesome solution to, to the problem because the steering takes a lot of torque. Um, in the back is the... Uh, so that's the motor control. This is a Fuberino. It's kind of like an Arduino, um, but it was uh, designed in part by people at Fubar, hence Fuberino. Um, this is the receiver for our remote control. So the way um, the way that the autonomy works is we take him to the to the course where he's going to drive. Um, we drive him around the course manually with the, uh, with the remote a couple times. We collect video and then we take the commands from the remote control and the video to train a neural network. And we put the neural network on here um, and we just let him go. Uh, so we, we train on a different board, obviously, because trying to train on a Raspberry Pi would take like two weeks. Um, the Raspberry Pi is kind of a limiting factor in this because it is a little underpowered for, for what we're doing. It takes, it takes about a fifth of a second to process one uh, image frame, which, like, if you're driving, is a very long time. Uh, so currently he goes... Kind of slow, which is not great because, like, eventually when there are more competitors, it will be a race. Um, but I mean, for the moment, we're we're really happy with uh, with how this is working. I mean, we're really happy that it's working at all. It took, it took like a year and a half to get to the point where it was actually like going around a track by itself. Um, any questions about Motto? Okay. This is Motto. Uh, it stands for Mini Auto. Um, so the like the brains is pretty much all the same. This is another Fiorino, another Raspberry Pi. Um, but on the underside, this was originally a uh, Traxxas RC car. So the underside is still like all of the uh, all the hardware for a Traxxas RC car. Um, and we've been using this guy just to sort of. Um, just to sort of like check our the, the software we're doing, um, because we you know we can train this guy the same way we train that one. So we've had him going around the going around the table, uh, we've had him you know just sort of going around the space a bit. Um, sorry, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Put it in. For those who are interested in trying this at home, this up here is a Raspberry Pi camera with a wide-angle lens. Uh, if you are interested in doing an autonomous car, I recommend a wide-angle lens instead of a regular Raspberry Pi camera. Um, we have we have uh, like code on, on GitHub that I can give you a link to if you want to. I can post a link if it needs it. Yeah. Um, this is Adam's car. Adam is well, one of one of the things we're doing with this project is we want to get more people involved. I mean, for for me personally, um, I know part of this part of my enthusiasm about this project is because it is really easy to do even if you don't know a lot of stuff and even if you don't have a lot of money to spend. This is actually, for what it does, this whole setup here is pretty inexpensive. Like a Raspberry Pi is not expensive, a Fuberino is not expensive. I mean, compared to, you know, a lot of people use LiDAR for autonomous systems, this is a $25 camera. Um, so, I mean, the whole thing has been pretty cheap to, to set up. Um, I mean, the, the brains on the, the Traxxas is a nice toy, so it's not 
for an RC car, it's not very cheap. But the, uh, the brains of this are, you know, I think, I think everything up here is, is under $100. Um, so we're trying to get people involved in this, you know, because it's cool and we want more people to be involved, but also because it's a, I think it's a really, for being such a complex project, it's not hard for people to just like dive in and have something working relatively quickly, especially because we have spent so much time like figuring out all the all the speed bumps to getting to, to this point. Um, and I, I mean, it's just cool. I mean, because because it parallels, you know, stuff that that companies are doing now. Um, so I think it's it's fun for people. Part of the reason I, I really like working on this is because like if I'm if I'm in the hackerspace working on it and people come in just to you know like poke around and see what what's going on here, everyone wants to talk about this. Like everyone thinks it's a really cool project. Uh, and when when we mentioned we're doing um, a session next Sunday where people bring like uh, you know they they bring their own RC cars and they bring a Raspberry Pi and a camera, and we try and get them to like this point here. I don't know how long that's going to take because we haven't. This is the first time we're trying it, um, but it's a it's a very satisfying project. So, have you always done stuff like this? Um, no. So I um, I started working on this around the time that I sort of burned out of my master's degree. Um, so I, I decided to take a break and. Um, and I was friends with, with Rick originally, and he mentioned that he was working on this project. So Rick mentioned he was working on this project, and I was like, oh, that's really cool, I want to work on that. Because, you know, my fiancé would come home, and he would talk about, like, all the cool stuff they did, and, um, and how much fun they were having, because, you know, they, they have, like, fancy toys, like robots and stuff. Um, so I, I wanted to work on this project, because I knew it would be cool. Uh, and that was, I think that was about a year ago. Now, were you doing anything in the Makerspace before you started doing this, or? Uh, no. No, I, you I joined for that. Yeah, I joined specifically for this project. Um, and for a while, I like I was just sort of there were there were so there was originally someone who was working on the software. Most of the work I've done has been on the software, like the machine learning and the um, the stuff that we've got running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and originally, there was someone else who was doing a. Then he moved away. Uh, and they like Rick was kind of like losing his mind because he was you know he was trying to work with this code that someone else had written. Uh, and he was trying to just get it to work. Um, so I sort of took over, even though I like had no confidence in it. Um, but we we had um, a couple of maker fairs. We had the New York maker fair and then the, the Pittsburgh maker fair. Um, and between the like the the like two month panic. Like in between those two, we we eventually got uh, auto working. Um, it was really satisfying to get auto working. Like the the first time he was actually driving autonomously was at Pittsburgh on the on the course, so we were pretty pleased. Somewhere there's there's video of that. Let's see if I'll see if we can get it to. You. Well, I think I think that's about it. All right.